Hello chess family, it's me National Master Jesse James and it's time for another personal game of mine. In this one I'm going to be playing against the Dutch defense as white and well I went ahead and went with this Hopkins attack. It's one of the new ones I've been trying out. I checked it on the computer and had a really good win percentage on uh, Lee Chess I believe it was 41% as white. So I was like okay well let's try this idea out. Hope you guys enjoy this attacking idea. Here we go. We start up with d4, f5. Dutch defense, already in accuracy apparently. I like to play it myself, so ah, I'm an inaccurate player. Bishop gg5, and this is the Hopkin attack. Uh, the idea here is that, well, if the knight does go to f6, well, you can ruin the pawn structure with bishop takes an f6, and really there's really no good way to take back with it. G takes f6, you can see how weak this is, um, this diagonal. Of course, e4 gets played for the um, fool's mate idea over here with queen to h5. And, well, if you take back with the E pawn, well, look at this bishop. It looks pretty bad here. Um, White just has a plus one advantage already in two moves. And there are some tricky variations in this one. So after bishop g5, my opponent went, went ahead and decided to play pawn to g6. And here I decide to go with knight to c3. A very nice move here. I remember uh, reading once in a book, it says, if your opponent plays knight c3 in the Dutch defense, they're either a genius or they're a complete amateur. Either way, it's going to be an interesting game. With this little move right here, we're already planning quick ideas with pawn to e4 to open up the position. Okay, well, Black saw this and he went ahead and played pawn to d5. He did not want that to happen. So now we got a stonewall kind of structure, although with g6, this is known as a Leningrad variation. So it's getting really interesting now. And, uh, well, simple chess. Let's just play pawn e3. We're just going to keep bringing out our pieces. Bishop to g7. And here I went ahead and played it, pawn to h4. I was feeling very aggressive here. And I like these h4, h5 ideas. And here he played h6, which I think was a pretty decent move, although it does create some weaknesses here. With that being said, if he had played something like knight f6, you best believe I'm playing pawn to h5 here. And if he does take, I won't even hesitate. Rook takes on h5, g takes on h5, queen takes sacrifice, and believe it or not, white is already winning in this position. And, uh, well, this is what I was aiming for. That's why this whole h4 um, idea I like quite a bit. He did play h6 and killed my idea, which is okay. Here, bishop f4, I still got a huge positional plus. He has this really weak square on e5 here, which I'm going to be taking advantage of pretty soon. Pawn to c6 here. Knight to f3. I'm, I, again, I can't be happier with my development. Bishop to e6. A very interesting idea here, which, well, I think he really kind of felt like the light squares are pretty weak on the king side, which they are, and so I'm going to try to take advantage of him as soon as possible. With that being said, I went ahead and played knight to e5. Free tempo on the weak g6 pawn that was created. And here we played bishop f7. And here the idea was to stop me from playing the g4 and getting really good pressure on the g6 pawn. And g4 is right around the corner. Well, let's go ahead and play it now. Pawn g4, this is already a plus 2 position. The idea is open up the game as fast as possible. You can see that these bishops are terrible over here as in this pawn structure. Well, they just have no good diagonals. Rather, my bishops, well, my bishop's hoping to open up the diagonal over here. And this bishop over here is looking quite good too, huh? Okay, here he went ahead and played pawn e6. Let's see, can you figure out which one is the pawn in this variation? Mm, it's this one right here. This is the pawn. Okay, so here, of course, the bishops are just very terrible right here. And let's just keep developing and keep making threats. And, uh, well, here I went ahead and played queen to f3 here. Developing, I really want to try to open up this position, but you got to be careful. If you play something like h5, well, black's going to be very happy. g5, and once you bring the bishop back, then he's closed the position up over on the king side. Now, there are still weak squares, and weak, uh, uh, and these bishops are still weak. But with that being said, I definitely want to keep it open. So queen f3 here was played with pawn takes, h5 kind of ideas, definitely in the future here. All right, he went ahead and played knight d7, which a move I was expecting here. My knight's just too strong here, so he's going to trade this bad knight for the good knight. And if you have to make a decision here, do you get rid of the bishop or the knight? It's a pretty simple decision for me. Let's get rid of that knight because, again, I want to play h5 and make the light squares weak. All right, so knight takes on f7. King takes on f7. And here, g takes on h5. Remember, to attack your opponent's king, you need open files and diagonals. So that was the idea with this one. And here, he played the the correct move and played, well, g takes on f5. Can you tell me, white to move, what happens if e takes on f5 here? It's white to move and get a winning attack here. All right, hopefully you push pause and try to figure it out. Here, believe it or not, it was knight takes d5, which I had spotted. Because, well, the activity is just too much here. The king is, is not castled. And, well, he's just going to be punished now after c takes d5. Queen takes d5 check. 
It doesn't matter where your king goes to. Uh, you can go to e8, you can go to f8. Either way, they're going to be harassed. Let's just go with the top move, which is king f8. And Tiro had either bishop d6 check planned or bishop c4. And you can just see that this position is opened up. My king will be castled suit, and the pieces are just in disarray. They're just unorganized here, and so they won't be helping out anytime soon. This is already a plus 4 position right here. All right, back to the game. G takes f5 was actually the best move. And here I went ahead and played queen to g3. And this might look like a strange move to some people, but after calculating for quite a while, I realized that queen h5 check really didn't give me uh, too much. Again, I have an advantage either way, but queen h5, I just don't have enough oomph in this position to actually do anything. Here he'd simply go king to e7, rook g1, developing a tempo on the bishop. But after queen f8, everything's pretty much guarded here. You could play your queen to g6 and bishop f6. And again, although the, the pieces are weak here, they are organized enough just to hold back the attack. And the best move for me here was, was just to go queen back to g3. That's why in the game I went ahead and played after g takes f5, queen to g3 right away. I won't say it was the best move, but I was hoping to get this rook g and uh, g1 move in with a little bit more oomph. Knight e7 was played, bishop b2, threatening bishop to h5 check. And here we played the best move, knight to f6. I was already kind of feeling that although my position is much better here, I'm not going to get a fast win, which is okay. You know, you got to stay uh, agile. You got to stay in the game. And, you know, you got to get to the next level of thinking, especially when you're a veteran chess, that you won't be winning in 20 moves or less. At the highest level, well, the game doesn't even start until move 40. And it's always fun when I, uh, funny when I talk to my opponents and they're like, oh, I got to move 20. I'm like, okay. You know, the game is just starting for me. We're just getting out of opening theory. And I've got past that little hurdle, which was, okay, i got to try and win in less than 30 moves kind of thing. It doesn't matter if you win in 10 moves or 50 moves, you know. The point is, is that you win. All right. Uh, enough of that tangent. Let's go on to the next move. Here, well, let's keep it going. Let's go in and castle queenside. Rook to g8. And unfortunately, my queen's going to be moving pretty soon. I did play work, rook h to g1 real quick. He played bishop h8. And of course, my queen just went to h3. And then here, my opponent just made a simple mistake. And he played knight to g6. Why to move? What do you play? Simple chess. Let's just take the free pawn. At this point, after taking the pawn, now I'm up an extra pawn and a pass pawn at that. And, uh, well, I'm just going to be running forward here. Again, this is a tough position whenever you're down in material. And also, your pieces are just not organized to make these kind of simple mistakes. He could have been trying to see if I would take the pawn also. Uh, maybe saying it was like a gambit. Unfortunately, this is not the case. And, well, the game just goes downhill very fast here. Knight g4 gets play, uh, played. Simple chess. What do you do here? Free money. Bishop takes. Pawn takes. Rook takes. Now I'm up two extra pawns. And a good position here. Bishop f6. Bishop g5. Bishop takes. Pawn takes. Keeping my pawns together here. I already had seen ideas about playing f4 and f5 here. And I'm not going to lie. I was a little worried. After something like rook takes g5. Something like rook h8. The pawn on, on h4 can get a little bit weak here, and, well, queen takes g5 ideas. So let's just keep these pawns together. h takes on g5, rook to h8, queen to g3, queen to e7, knight to e2. I want to start pushing this pawn forward because it's going to help me open up the position. And, well, this is also a really good defender uh, for the king. So knight to e2 was a simple idea of going knight to f4. He played pawn e5, and again, doesn't take me too long. Do I want trades in this position? Yes, I want to open up this king. I went ahead and just played pawn takes. He played queen takes. And by all means, you're more than welcome to trade queens here and go into a very good end game. Although the king is just so vulnerable here, it's actually a good idea to keep the queens on the board just so you can attack them. So I went ahead and played the best move here, which is pawn to f4. At this point, my opponent went ahead and resigned. This is a very difficult position. The pawns are being pushed forward here. And, well, I mean, there's some sample positions we could look at. But, again, everything is just going to be bad here because my pawns get pushed forward. And they're just too active over here. King is vulnerable. These rooks aren't on good squares. Oof. Here we go. A, a nice win here with the Hopkins attack against the Dutch defense. And also adding in this knight c3 idea, which is, well, a weird-looking idea because it doesn't push the pawn on c4. All right, guys, hope you enjoyed this game. We'll see you in the next one.